Hi! Recaps of films here. Today, I will show you a comedy, romance, horror film from 2020 titled Spontaneous. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Mara is seen sitting in class, bored as heck. She drops her pencil, and as she goes to get it, the girl in front of her erupts. Mara describes the girl as pleasant and ordinary, not particularly explosive. Except for her, everyone else leaves the classroom. They were never truly pals, they were simply classmates. The dead girl was liked by all of the students, but one in particular. Tess catches Mara in front of the building as the kids run out and asks her what happened. She can't believe what she's seeing until she sees Mara's shoes. Evidence is taken from the classroom by forensics. The girl was the only object that was seriously harmed in the explosion. Everything else, as Mara points out, was only damaged was a matter of taste. Her classmates are arrested and questioned at a police station. Mara cracks jokes with the cop, but he sees right through her humor. After that, they're allowed to shower, and Mara asks if she can get her shoes back. The students are given new clothes and forced to wait in the station by the police. Dylan makes an offhanded remark about how it all looked like something out of a David Cronenberg film, but Mara is the only one who laughs, inquires as to when they will be released. Mara said they'll do it once they're satisfied the incident won't happen again. Mara is picked up from the police station and brought home by her parents. She goes to her room and smokes weed as they arrive, then receives a text from someone informing her that they are smitten with her. She laughs as they continue to communicate. The girl's funeral is scheduled for the following day. Mara and Tess stand there watching as the girl's father removes a bumper sticker off his car. Then they went to the Dalton twins to collect some mushrooms. Tess doesn't think it's a good idea. They go out for coffee later. They've been friends since they were children, and they intend to stay friends until they die. When Dylan approaches and begs to join them, they chat about the girl who died. He flirts with Mara, and she discovers he's the same kid that texted her previously. Dylan informs them that what occurred made him reflect on his life and that he now wants to do something about it. To the maximum extent possible, live his life. Mara becomes ill as a result of the mushrooms and pukes in the toilet while Dylan holds the fort, her tresses. She begins to have hallucinations and informs him about them. He thinks that's fantastic. Her hallucinations last all night, and he stays by her side. They discuss what occurred, claiming that they both missed it. When Dylan arrives at her house, he invites her out on a date. Her and Tess are later laying on her bed, chatting. Mara declares that she will not use any more medic drugs. It's the day of the homecoming game, and the two girls are dressed up for the occasion. When Dylan joins them, they notice that the other students have erected a shrine for the murdered girl. Mara's outfit is Carrie, he recognizes. Later, in the library, the two of them converse, and she inquires as to how he came to have a crush on her. He claims that it all started the first time he met her and evolved from there. The day the girl died, and Mara warned him that it may happen to them all, he made the decision. Go approach her and ask her out instead of waiting for the proper opportunity. She's at the game shooting pictures of the jocks while they wait for their jerseys to line up, and she goes on to tell him about the moment she discovered she liked him. They share a good moment together. When something happens during the game, because one of the players has erupted, Mara's hand is grabbed by Dylan, who drags her out of the room. They embrace in the shadows of the sports arena. The city is made into a major news story. The incident has been termed the Covington Curse by the media. Tess and Mara go to the most recent memorial, where everyone recalls the kid who died. Her parents notify her the next day that school has been cancelled indefinitely. They assure her that they will continue to apply to institutions, so she will be okay. That night, Dylan arrives in an old ice cream truck that he had purchased earlier that day to pick her up. He purchased it in order to make everyone laugh. They attend a school picnic in honor of the children who died, but they leave abruptly. Taking a stroll is a good idea. They chuck away their beverages because they believe it is the alcohol that is causing the problem. It took place. They giggle as they speculate on what causes the teens to erupt. They pause for a minute to chat about his father. They go to investigate what occurred when they hear screaming from the house. Another pupil passed away. Agent Rosdy is approached by Mara and Tess. She too has no idea what's going on. Rosdy requests their assistance and requests that they bring her anything. She then goes to the Dalton twins and informs them that the agent instructed her to bring them something, drugs. Mara believes the reason behind this isn't because the cops believe the narcotics are genuinely illegal. She informs them that she would purchase all they have. They drive to the location where the twins keep their hoard. 
They inform Mara that they would be leaving town shortly, and she informs them of Dylan's situation. I'm messaging him. Suddenly, the brother erupts in rage. When the sister hops into the driver's seat and tries to drive the automobile, she crashes. Dylan discovers the automobile smashed, but does not immediately locate Mara. He notices a bloody handprint and heads into the woods to look for her. Dylan comes to her washing up in a river and gives her a hug, stating he believed she had perished. In the car, he brought her a sweatshirt and dialed Rosti's number before he arrived. Suddenly, he notices a man in a hazmat suit standing nearby. More quickly come and sees the two of them. Mara is at a hospital when a doctor appears and tells her that he or she is there to assist her. She begins to panic, but then notices Dylan on the bed next to her. Dylan wakes her up later that night and informs her that the entire class is also present. The entire class has been placed under quarantine by the authorities. The class meets the next day in a leisure chamber. Mara expresses her boredom and suggests that they go outside. Because no one wants to or has tried, they begin to speak about the explosions. Mara mocks him since she doesn't comprehend what they're doing to assist them. The youngsters chuckle at the official's cliched response, but he rapidly becomes enraged. One of them blows up. Then another one goes off while you're asleep. The facility is undergoing testing. The children continue to die, despite the fact that all of the tests and medications administered to them have failed. Even the doctors who work at the hospital become agitated. The blue medication they've been given appears to be working. It has made everyone in the institution happy. When Mara notices that there are no Christmas decorations, her parents drive her home. Mara takes one of the blue tablets before going to bed. Dylan shows up to her place the next day. For the first time, they sleep together. Mara decorates Dylan's barn for Valentine's Day, and the two of them throw a party there. Only for them. He tells her he loves her, and she responds with the F word. They joke about it, and if they don't die, Dylan invites her to spend the summer with him. The doctor visits their school the next day to explain the snooze button pill. The doctor recruits a volunteer to demonstrate a point, but as soon as begins to follow her, the doctor becomes frustrated. He erupts at the command. Another one goes off without warning. Then there's a third. They're all fleeing and attempting to escape out. Mara is left behind, and when a classmate attempts to assist her, he explodes as well. She locates a door and exits the school. Outside, Dylan runs into her and they embrace. Dylan suddenly erupts in front of her. Mara returns home drenched in blood. Rosie tracks her down and transports her to the hospital. A piece of his jaw slammed into her in the head. Her mother goes to the hospital to assist her in becoming clean. She gets terribly despondent and quits taking the medicines, refusing to converse. The funeral for Dylan comes and goes. Tess attempts to get Mara to leave her room, but she only sits there watching Dylan videos. Her father informs her that he isn't prepared to cope with the situation after she consumes the drink. She leaves her residence that night inebriated. Mara then disrupts a demonstration over the curse before stealing wine from a shop. Agent Rosti is waiting for her in front of the store, and when Mara tries to hurl a bottle at her, she is confronted by Agent Rosti. She smashes her window with a bottle of vodka. Mara pays a visit to Dylan's grave in the cemetery. She confesses her love for him and lies down on his grave. When his mother discovers her, she invites her to join her and then lies down alongside her. Mara confides in her that she feels like she's dying and is terrified all of the time. Dylan's mother claims that life may be like way at times and that none of the children deserved it. What went wrong with them? She takes up her bandage and remembers Dylan as she stares at the scar. The explosions halt after a few months. Mara bids Rosie farewell. Dylan's vehicle is transporting Mara to college. She passes by the school that will be demolished. 31 had perished by the conclusion of the school year. Mara survived despite the fact that she had no idea why. The lesson, she argues, is that everyone dies and that you must live your life to the fullest in whatever manner you wish. Mara can envision herself in the future, what she will do, and the men she will date or marry. Unpleasant things are bound to occur. This is unavoidable. She isn't going to squander her life waiting for something that may never arrive. She won't be terrified anymore since she, like you, may die at any moment. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on the notification and leave a like to help the channel out. Thanks for watching.